Hello again everybody, it's Mr. Gear. Let's get smarter about taking polynomials apart, factory, starting with the rational root theorem. Now we have seen, and I hope you're familiar with the fact that we can take polynomials, models, math, apart. We can factor it into pieces that can be multiplied back together into the original. Six factors out of 6x plus 2, for example. This quadratic, with nothing in front of the x squared, is pretty easy to take apart into the two factors by a process I call brute force. Something that's bigger, a little more complicated, with a leading coefficient, if it comes apart, if it factors, we have a variety of tools. The one that I like is the star method. It takes 12x squared plus 44x plus 35 into its two pieces, 2x plus 5, 6x plus 7, multiplied back together, back to the original polynomial. But why? Why? Why do we take these things apart? What purpose does it serve? Why do we need them in pieces? Well, for the same reason we take apart an engine or a specious argument. It's because it may be just one part of it that we really need to analyze. Maybe just one part of it that's broken and we need to see how to fix it. Maybe just that one part is the interesting part that does whatever it is we're trying to find that the model does. And we can't see this in here. It's too well hidden. We need it taken apart to see it by itself. But all three that I just had up there were quadratics, second degree. What if what we're working with is bigger, more complicated? What if it's cubic, third degree, fourth degree, fifth degree? What if it's even bigger? What tools do we use then? We don't have a star method for cubic functions. Now, we do have some shortcuts. If it is a difference or a sum of cubes, we have a recipe we can follow to take that apart. But what if it doesn't follow a pattern? What if it is just a cubic? What if it is four terms and it is too big for me to see a factor, for me to just take out? What do we do then? Now, the fundamental theorem of algebra tells me that since this is cubic, there have to be three factors. How do I discover what those three factors are? The short answer, we're gonna peel the onion layer by layer. And the thing that's gonna help us find those layers is the rational root theorem. Now, I think the easiest way to show you how the rational root theorem can help us peel this onion is first by showing you the answer. Pretty good, eh? Now, I've done everything here that you would do as part of the factoring higher degree polynomials video. Here's the solution. Here are the factors which made the roots of that original cubic polynomial. Notice I had to set the polynomial equal to zero in order to get to those roots. But these factors are the things that you could multiply back together to get to the original cubic polynomial. These are equivalent representations of the same model. And these are the solutions, the x values that would provide an output of zero from this model. How do we get there? One of the tools was the rational root theorem. And what the rational root theorem says is, I don't know what these numbers are yet, but I can give you a list that they had to have come from. And I'll explain why they had to come from that list in a moment. For now, let me show you what the list is. The rational root theorem says, ignore what's in the middle. Look only at the end numbers. Take those two numbers, the constant term on the end, the leading coefficient at the beginning, and factor them completely apart. In fact, slightly different from factoring them completely apart is you're not factoring 20 into the smallest numbers that multiply to make 20. You are finding all of the numbers that can be factors of 20 and all the numbers that can be factors of two. We're gonna call all of these factors P. P is the list of numbers that contain all the factors of 20. And we'll call all the factors that could make two Q. The rational root theorem says that your rational roots have to come from a list which consists of P over Q. So a whole list of fractions where the tops come from here and the bottoms come from here. Now that's a pretty big list, but it is nice that now it's a list of 12 items, not a jillion. Now that is made slightly worse by the fact that unless your original polynomial was made entirely of positive terms, meaning all of your factors were positive, then every one of these could be positive or it could be negative. These 12 items are actually 24 items, but it does help that some of these items are duplicates. Two over two is really one, four over two is really two, 10 over two is really five, 20 over two is really 10, we can get rid of those. So now we only have 16 options, these numbers and their negative counterparts. 
the fundamental bit of the rational root theorem is that if you have rational roots, they're in that list, and they are. Our answers, remember that we don't know yet, are one, negative four, and five over two, or two and a half. There they are. We just didn't know which ones were the right ones. Now what you'll see in the factoring higher degree polynomials video is how to take this list of potentialities, test them one by one, and find a good one, and work from there to find the rest of them. What I want to touch on now for a few seconds is why. Why do they have to come from this list? And to do that, I need the factors back. Remember, the roots that are the right roots came from these factors, and these factors were equivalent representations of the original polynomial taken apart into things that multiply, and we've set it equal to zero, so the zero products property will let us find those roots. So we found positive one, we found negative four, and we found positive five over two. Take a look at these last numbers of the correct factors. Look at what they multiply to make. One, negative one, times four, times negative five, makes positive 20. Those last bits, those last constant terms in each of those linear terms, multiply to make the last term. Look at the front. The fronts of each of these binomials, x times x times 2x, multiplied together, got us to 2x cubed. Now the combinations that we also have to multiply when we multiply everything times everything is what makes the center terms. We don't care about those right now. The only things that multiply to make the last term are the last terms. And the only things that multiply to make the first term are the first terms. So why the whole P over Q-ness? Why those over those? And the thing that will explain that for us is looking at this term. 2x minus 5 equals 0 according to the zero products property would get us 0 for the whole polynomial. To solve this, we would take 2x minus 5, set it equal to 0, add 5 to both sides, and then divide everything by 2. We created this correct root from this original polynomial by taking the last term from this factor and dividing it by the first term from this factor. So every root will come from taking the last term of its correct factor and dividing it by the first term of its factor. All of the potential factors of the last term divided by all of the potential factors of the first term. So we can't say yet which one's right, but we know that all of the potential factors of the last term will ultimately div be divided by the potential factors of the first term to get to the list of things it could be, which is a big list, but certainly manageable. That's why factors of constant divided by factors of leading coefficient. That's why p's over q's. That's why last term of the binomial divided by first term of the binomial. Because when we solved using the zero products property, we had to take that last term and divide it by the first term. That's the algebra it took to turn the factor into a root. That's how the rational root theorem can get me down to a list of potential roots. They have to have been built that way because algebra. And now that I have a complete list of potential rational roots, if I have a tool I can use to test them one by one and find a good one, I can peel back the layers of the onion. And like I said, actually solving this polynomial to find its roots is beyond the scope of this video. Check out the factoring higher degree polynomials video to see how we use this to get to the answer.